Holy Commitment to Mary. She is the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in our life. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be done to me, the Lord is delivered. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Today's Holy Mass was offered up for the repose of the soul of Deacon Carter's father, William Carter. And today is the feast of St. Mary Magdalene. The Lord said to Mary Magdalene, Go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my father and your father, to my God and your God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all you angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, whose only begotten Son entrusted Mary Magdalene before all others with announcing the great joy of the resurrection, grant, we pray, that through her intercession and example we may proclaim the living Christ and come to see him reigning in your glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all, therefore we all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who might live no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on we regard 
no one according to the flesh. Even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts. Like the earth parched, lifeless, and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus have I gazed towards you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet sh shall, be, shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you, your right hand upholds me. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they've taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. Mary stayed outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he told her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Gospel has seemed to be wiped away. The opening words to the 1967 Beatles song, A Day in the Life, goes like this. I read the news today, oh boy. Isn't that the feeling we all have these days, that the news is just awful? Riots, burning of businesses, tearing down of statues, a huge increase in violent crime, global pandemic, political unrest, unemployment, financial upheaval, travel bans, you name it. We're even seeing the burning of churches now and the desecration of religious sites in what appears to be a new religious persecution. America and the world are really suffering right now. We're not the first generation to deal with bad news, but when we become so inwardly focused on our own troubles that it can seem that way. It can seem that things have never been so bad and can't possibly get any worse, or that they can't possibly get any better. Today is the feast of Mary Magdalene, who fails to recognize that the man she is speaking to is Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. Why? because she's so inwardly focused on her troubles, on her loss. Just like the travelers on the road to Emmaus, 
who could not see Jesus for the same reason, even though he was walking with them. And how aren't we like that sometimes? Don't we fail to notice Christ in our midst because we're blind to him? We don't recognize him. Do we seek to encounter him in scripture? Do we seek to encounter him in the, in the sacraments or in ordinary life in our private prayer? Or is he not really prominent in our lives as he should be? Has the Lord reached out to you in some way and you failed to even recognize that it was him? Pope Gregory the Great said this back in the 6th century. When even disciples departed from the sepulcher, Mary Magdalene did not depart. She looked for him whom she, had, whom she had not found. But it's not enough to have looked once, because the force of love intensifies the effort of the search. She looked for him a first time and found nothing. She persevered in seeking, and that is why she found him. Mary Magdalene witnessed persecution and despair and the effects of sin on her society, and she said, I read the news today, oh boy. But her burning desire to find Christ led her to him. She persevered in seeking Christ until she found him. And when she did, the risen Christ tells her to bring the good news, the evangelion, the gospel, to the disciples. This gives her the distinction of being the first evangelist to witness to the risen Christ. That, friends, is the essence of Christianity. That's what it's all about. Meet the risen Christ and then go tell the world. We as Christians must never regard the resurrection as a metaphor for something bland and stale. It's not just some story which is fun to tell or a quaint tale. It's not a literary device. It shook the world when it happened. It's not a normal thing for a dead man to go into a tomb and then come out. Not today and not then. The Son of Man walked among us. He died at the hands of his enemies and then he rose again. It's as amazing now as it was then. And he's here with us now. There's no amount of bad news that can overcome the good news. There's no amount of darkness that can overcome a single candle. But Jesus isn't a candle. Jesus is the light. Let me leave you with one more quote from another great pope. In 1986, Pope John Paul the Great said this, We do not pretend that life is all beauty. We're aware of darkness and sin, of poverty and pain. But we know Jesus has conquered sin and passed through his own pain to the glory of the resurrection. And we live in the light of his paschal mystery, the mystery of his death and resurrection. We are an Easter people, and hallelujah is our song. We are not looking for a shallow joy, but rather a joy that comes from faith. So friends, let us pray for St. Mary Magdalene's intercession today that we may receive the hope that she held on to in looking for Christ so that we might never stop seeking Christ until we find him and proclaim him to the world. The Beatles made great music, but a day in the life is in our song. Hallelujah is our song. Now together we stand and bring our petitions to the Lord. Response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, our bishops and priests, that with the whole church they may take their stance of faith in the resurrection which was first proclaimed by Mary Magdalene, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The angels who announce good news to Mary Magdalene may also bring the glad tidings of peace to our world helping us in our work for life and justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations, especially to contemplative life, that many more generous hearts may respond to the one who seeks to be their Rabboni, their beloved teacher and spouse, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who stand weeping by the tomb of their hopes and dreams, that they may hear themselves called by name and filled with good news from the Lord Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our beloved departed ones, especially my dad, William Carter Sr., for whom this Mass is being offered, 
that they may receive the living fruit of Jesus' resurrection in their own entrance into his eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We turn to our Blessed Mother and ask for her powerful intercession as together we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Just be God. By the vicious word of one, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. To the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We bring you these sacrificial gifts, O Lord, to commemorate blessed Mary Magdalene, humbly entreating that you may bestow on us both pardon and salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deum Sabaoth, Plenis Uncelli et Terra, Gloria Tua. Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini. Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, O Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilson, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you for them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise that they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, 
Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and count them on the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. Masteria Fidei Tentua Anunciamos Domine, et Sua Resurrection in Pontitemor, Dohone Venias. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, able the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, especially William, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants who those sinners, hope and your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but grant us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. 
through him and with him and in him O God Almighty Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever Amen. at the Savior's command informed by divine teaching we dare to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On you, Shehedi, Qui tollis pecats amundi, Miserere nobis. On you, Shehedi, Qui tollis pecats amundi, Miserere nobis. On you, Shehedi, Qui tollis pecats amundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be given. Antiphon for holy men and women. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant who travels in search of fine pearls, and who, on finding one of great price, sold everything and bought it.
Let us pray. May the working of this divine sacrament enlighten and inflame in us, Almighty God, on this feast day of Blessed Mary Magdala, that we may be ever fervent with holy desires and abound in good works through Christ our Lord. Amen. So after Mass will be available for confessions, and then tonight uh, we'll have uh, exposition of Blessed Sacrament at uh, right after the 7 o'clock Mass, and then confessions until 9 o'clock tonight with benediction. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, the Prince, the heavenly host, and by the power of God, God the mercy, and all the evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Salve